At a time when India is reeling under acute rise of COVID-19 cases and tremendous pressure on the medical system, Israel has come out as a global example as far as the vaccination and control over this pandemic is concerned. Today, we are joined by a very special guest from Tel Aviv, Dr. Asher Salman, who is Director of International Cooperation at the Ministry of Health in Israel, as well as the member of the National Council of Health of Israeli government. So welcome to APP News, sir. Good uh, afternoon. Good afternoon. And uh, my first question to you is that how did Israel did this turn around at a time when Israel is able to lift the, 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 the ban or maybe the restrictions of usage of masks in the public spaces as well as opening up the schools are concerned for the primary and secondary classes. So what is the turnaround story of Israel? If you can share your secrets, your story with us. Well, there are no secrets, but the number speaks. And if three months ago we had for 9 million residents, we are actually a tiny country, a, around 10,000 new cases a day, we are now around 100. And the difference was done, most, uh, a lot related to restriction, but much more uh, related to the vaccine uh, campaign. And uh, by able to vaccinate, uh, as I uh, would say, close to 70 or 80 percent of the adult population, helped us to uh, really reduce these numbers dramatically and be able slowly, slowly, because we have to be very cautious to open uh, some uh, activities and, and lift some restrictions. We are still under a clear uh, national uh, uh, restriction system. It is not that this pandemic is over, unfortunately. I think all of us have a way to go, but things are looking much better now. Prime Minister of Israel took his first vaccine jab, vaccine shot on 20th of December, if I may recall correctly. And after that, Israel uh, ran a very rigorous vaccination program. How did you plan it? How did you go about it? As far as the, the Indian program is concerned, we have vast majority of number. We are also rapidly vaccinating here in India. But uh, what are the lessons? What are the best practices which Israel can offer as far as the vaccination program is concerned? There are many lessons, but I, I would give you a few points. The mm -hmm. first point is central planning and, se and central operational activities and central controlling of the whole operation. Second, bring into the table as many uh, stakeholders as you can. You need your hospital system, you need your public health system, you need the police, you need the, you need the military, you need in a, your ambulance services, you need in community services. All of them must understand that they are part of this operation. So you bring into the table, but you are still planning meticulously. Mostly you have to be very uh, planned when you're dealing with vaccines like we are using Pfizer, where they are very sensitive with a short expiry date and uh, uh, many issues of temperature and vibration. You have to pre-register people ahead, not to ask people just to come and queue, but rather uh, create, a, 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 I would say, a convenient system of pre-registration. And we did register through phone or through the internet or through your app and your cell phone. Uh, you could just easily register your uh, your appointment. Then of course, yeah. To, yeah. Please go ahead. Then of course, yeah. Then of course, we had to add to this story uh, uh, many, I would say, uh, many bodies in sense of organizing proper place of vaccination because you you really need to allow people to queue safely, and you need to allow people to stick around for fifteen or twenty minutes in a safe physical distancing, uh, you know, to, uh, to monitor people before discharging them due to some potential adverse events. In that sense, uh, uh, that was very important to plan in time. And then, of course, never forget small issues like syringes and needles. Many countries who are organized vaccine find, uh, found out that they don't have the proper type of syringe, and then you lose a lot of, of, of your vaccines. And then you need still some sense of flexibility, meaning that 
when you are left over, let's say at the end of the day with vaccines, you need these people that you could call, that they would be on standby and you would call them in. We use the first responders for that. So policemen, fire brigades, ambulance driver, all of them knew that if, if we may call them at the end of the day and send them to be vaccinated due to some extra doses which were left. And lastly, I think our operation, well, we're a small country, that's easy, it was paperless. Everything was IT driven. We had a central IT system that recorded every vaccine and recorded every side effect. And that was very, uh, I would say, uh, helpful. I, I don't think we would be so successful if we would write, you know, on paper with a pencil. Now, again, there's also the media campaign and the public campaign that you must, must create. And the basic idea, at least which has happened, it was a kind of a market of demand and supply. People felt that it's better to be vaccinated sooner rather later because who knows if supply would come in time. And that created this wave of people of coming in. So uh, if I may understand, uh, if you can explain it, uh, that did you give uh, flexibility to people that if in a 24-7 vaccination program at any point of uh, time they want to vaccinate, so was it running 24-7 day and night vaccination program? And uh, did you keep it flexible that after finishing up the priority list, you allowed people, those who are willingly want to get vaccinated? Okay, it was not 24-7, but uh, at least in the beginning, it was 14-7, meaning 14 hours a day, seven days a week. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, we did not encourage people which were not in the relevant group to come, but if people came and queued at the end of the day and were left over, we allowed at the vaccination point to, to vaccinate them. So actually, in the first week, you saw this phenomenon of young people coming around 10 p.m., night to these vaccination points and waiting and actually many of them were vaccinated. Hmm. Uh, Israel is now planning to have a vaccine passport and probably maybe the, the first country, the most vaccinated country to allow international tourism based on the on the vaccine passport. So if you can uh, please explain you know what this idea is about and how it is going to be rolled out. Well we have two types of documents. The first is a, a vaccination certificate which is in English and has your passport number on it and that is good for international purposes. Then mm -hmm. we have our green pass which is now still domestic mm -hmm. and this green pass allows you to enter a cultural venues, concert hall, restaurants, bars, swimming pool, gyms. Many of these venues are open only for people carrying the green pass. Now the way it is done that the green pass is not a piece of paper but rather a barcode on your cell phone. And when you come to one of these venues, they scan the barcode and they would just get green or red. Green meaning you're allowed in, red it seems that you have a problem and you should not enter. And that's the way that it is. This green pass is available for people which were vaccinated with the two doses of vaccine or individuals who have recovered from the disease, had the official PCR proof of having the virus and recovered. Now, regarding recovered individuals, we, are, we started to vaccinate all through them. So in the future, even recovered people would have to uh, show a green pass, that they, meaning that they were vaccinated. And at this point, we are giving them only a single dose. Dr. Salman, uh, recently uh, we have read some media reports that uh, some uh, some Indian variant strain has also been detected in in few cases in Israel. So, uh, how are you going to to control this this kind of transition where the international travelers coming from different countries and the way and there is a possibility of entry of a different strain in Israel? So, how how you have planned to control this kind of uh, of mixing of population or maybe like the entry of such variant strains? Well, that is actually one of our main concerns for the last week or so. Mm -hmm. And uh, as you have mentioned, uh, well, we had the UK and then the South African and then the Brazilian. Now we're dealing with the Indian strain. Uh, unfortunately, we found a high percentage of uh, travelers from India to Israel, even people which are vaccinated, was carrying the virus. And uh, it's a, ma a major concern. Uh, we are now uh, restricting 
again, some of international traveling, some of the things that we were more liberal in the last few weeks, we are now closing again, and people must quarantine. So if you are fully vaccinated, but you are vaccinated abroad, you would be quarantined till you have a serology test and a negative PCR test. If you were not vaccinated, you need to, vaccine, to, to isolate for 10 days with two PCR tests or 14 days with one. And uh, that's what we do. Now, we have many travelers from India, both students, businessmen, uh, workers, professionals, which are coming to work in Israel. And, and, and I think at this point, for many of them, we would offer them a hotel, governmental run hotels for the uh, quarantine uh, period. So have you isolated the population? Have you isolated such travelers who may... Yeah, be- we, we use... Uh, every, everyone which is not vaccinated or recovered must isolate for 10 or 14 days. Mm-hmm. Are vaccinated abroad again or recovered abroad, you would have to isolate until you have both a negative PCR and a positive serology. If are, you serology encouraging, are you encouraging them to be part of the Israeli vaccination program? Can they can they uh, participate? Can they take the, the vaccine shots which have been given in Israel? So Such for instance, Israel, yeah. Indian citizens which are coming to Israel for studies or to work are fully vaccinated by us. Mm-hmm. And Everybody that is uh, intended to stay in Israel for, let's say, a year or so, would be fully vaccinated with no expenses by by our, us, the Ministry of Health. Uh, Dr. Salvan, uh, you're also a lead of Israel in WHO. And WHO is also considering, uh, you know, uh, and the scientists also do not know, uh, you know, well, will there be a booster shot for the vaccination program? Will there be an introduction of the essential universal influenza in vaccination? So many things are being talked about, many things are being worked about. What is, as a medical practitioner, as a medical expert on the issue, what is your assessment about the booster shot and the, the variants of the vaccinations which are being done in different countries? So will there be a universal vaccination program so that, you know, we can reduce the chances of such spread? We don't know yet the answers. These questions are great questions with no answers, whether it's better to stick to a certain type of vaccine, whether it's better to mix between two or three types. Mm-hmm. Uh, we are not yet sure when, if at all, the companies are going to modify the vaccine in order to uh, accommodate better the new variants. And we have to remember that it's a single strain RNA virus, which tend to uh, go through many, many mutations uh, very unstable from the genomic point of view. And some, most of them would be irrelevant, but some of them could be a, a problematic when we're talking about resistance to vaccines. And we don't even have a schedule for a third shot, for a booth shot. Uh, mm-hmm. It seems that, uh, at least for six months, the current vaccines are effective. So at this point, I do believe we would prolong uh, the recognition of vaccination for a year. Would we have, a, like with influenza, an annual vaccine? Maybe. Would it be part of the vaccine? And I think that's actually a thing that would happen in the future, that COVID-19 would be part of, 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 of the ingredients in the standard, uh, you know, fall vaccines that many of us are taking. Uh, how would we solve uh, the situation, whether a catastrophe come and we would have a resistance strain? Uh, all of these questions are still open. We are starting to uh, to study these issues at home. We are, start, we are trying to uh, collaborate with other countries, and we are certainly part of the approach of WHO of giving better answers. Last question, Dr. Salman. Uh, India and Israel share a very uh, deep relation, a strategic partnership. Being director of the International Cooperation and Ministry of uh, Health in Israel, uh, are you also, uh, have you extended any help for India to fight? Have you ever shared your best practices, anything in terms of the technological cooperation to India to mitigate and fight out this pandemic at, at a time when the cases are rising up? Certainly. So we are a small country, certainly tiny in comparison to India. We are trying to lift uh, and, and, and provide any help or assistance that we, we can. There were some issues with oxygen supply that we had authorized uh, 
issues with some medications that we would certainly are planning to send this week to India. I have shared a lot of my experience, uh, others have shared their experience, and we are uh, basically talking, collaborating, uh, uh, discussing together, and, uh, and in that sense, I think our friendship is is being proven to be very important for both sides during this terrible pandemic era. Uh, there were times that Israel was more problematic than India. There, were, there are days like now that India is suffering more than Israel, but I think we have to stand one for the other. Uh, you mentioned about uh, Israel extending help in terms of the oxygen generator and some, some equipments and medicines. Can you please elaborate on that, sir? We got some uh, requests from the Indian government regarding mm -hmm. some needs, and we are uh, we're looking for solutions. And I think of at least partially uh, we would be able to supply. We did it before, also at the previous wave, and we would certainly uh, help as much as we can uh, now in our days now. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Salman, for sharing uh, the perspective from Israel and uh, sharing the story of Israel vaccinating the maximum number of population in the world as far as the COVID-19 is concerned. And may you stay safe, keep the people of Israel safe. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. ABP News आपको रखे आगे